A lot of people have this notion that once they get to be 55 years old, an active adult community is the only place to live. Well, I really hate to break their bubble, but it may not be. I'm going to go take a real hard look at what have become some of the more common, I guess, complaints that I hear from people who have pulled up stakes in Michigan or Indiana, New York, or wherever, bought into the uh, active adult community lifestyle, and really are not all that excited about it anymore. Let's get started. Welcome to our favorite YouTube channel where we talk about Florida, living in the Bay Area, and real estate in the Tampa Bay Area. If you are interested in any or all that, click on that subscribe button down below, hit that notification button as well. We will let you know when our next video is published. Just in case this is your first visit, my name is Mike LaBoy. My wife Paula and I have lived in the Bay Area for 30 years and absolutely love living here. Our team has helped hundreds of people move into the Bay Area. We would love to help you as well. Looking at those glossy sales brochures with everybody's smiling faces on it, you would think that moving into a community like this is gonna be nothing but peaches and cream for the rest of your life. Those brochures are not necessarily reality. Moving into an adult active community could potentially be a disaster. Don't get me wrong, I am not here to talk you out of moving into an adult active community. They can be a very nice place to live. And there's you know plenty of activity, there's something going on basically all year round. The things like arts and crafts and Funko or poker nights, uh, a pickleball, the tennis courts are always out there. Most of them have beautiful golf courses, multiple golf courses on some. Live bands, concerts almost every day, if not every day. Parties, I mean, um, I was out at the, uh, the villages earlier this year. They were getting ready to set up for a uh, Kentucky Derby party uh, race with stick horses. Paul and I have done that. It's actually a pretty fun time. For the right people, an adult community works very well if you go into it with your eyes wide open. And if you think about it, an adult community is just basically like any other neighborhood. It's a mismatch of people from all walks of life, experiences, backgrounds, good or bad. As far as the residents go, the only real difference between an adult community and any other community is gonna be the fact that there's a big lack of people under the age of 55. A good majority of those residents are gonna be retired. Yes, people do retire at 55 nowadays. But let's say there's, I don't know, a thousand homes with two residents per, that's 2000 people with nothing but time on their hands. Most of those people are gonna be involved in some sort of activity and be a gone and you'll never hear them complain. You probably never hear from them unless you make friends with them. They're gonna go about their lives making friends, dancing, playing cards, bocce ball, probably pickleball. I mean, everybody plays pickleball nowadays. However, just like Mrs. Kravitz in Bewitched, <laughs> there will always be that neighbor or neighbors who wanna get all up into your business. They're gonna be able to tell you what time you were up for breakfast, but uh, when you got home, who you had over for dinner, and God forbid your trash can is out, uh, out in front of the house too long they're gonna be the first ones to call the HOA and complain. I don't think they are intentionally a pain in the, uh, in the back. I think it's just because they have really, they have no social life. They have uh, way too much free time on their hands. Probably aren't too happy with their lives. In my opinion, the best way to handle them is to sit out in front of the open garage with a bottle of scotch and have a couple of drinks, maybe a cigar. Give them something really excited to get, uh, get excited about. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is they might come over and join you. It could happen. Well, we're talking about the residents. Remember back in high school, there was always that group of kids that formed some kind of a clique. I mean, you had to be super cool to associate with them, or at least that's what they thought. Well, I've had a couple of people come back to me and have, have moved into an adult community tell me the same thing goes on there. And those high schoolers, they just got older. The comment was really tough, uh, too bad for the clique there are hundreds of other people to hang with to worry about joining that clique. And really, even think about it, the weird thing is that I have the same group in my hood, neighborhood and I don't even live in the uh, adult community yet. Another item with the, with the residents harkens back to a show called Peyton Place. You should be old enough to know what that is. 
I've had so, I've heard some people who move into an adult community think it's some kind of a dating app. Well, it's not. However, there are a lot of singles out there. The men are outnumbered three to one. You might find the love of your life, but you know, and that might not happen. But really, that's no reason to move into an adult community. I've been told about people gossiping about who's dating who and is he or she married and does her husband or wife, why did they break up? I mean, really, they, if, if these people have way too much time on their hands to get involved in this. Maybe it's because, you know, in the adult community, those residents are hanging around with a limited number of people at a restaurant or a bar or a dance club, you know, any of those places where people can hang out. And again, they have way too much time on their hands. Off that topic. Another issue to be aware of is the HOA. There are HOAs in pretty much every state. That is especially true in here in Florida. People tend to either love them or hate them. And in an adult community, you are not gonna get away from them. They do serve a function, you know, community maintenance and the continuity of the houses and cleanliness of the community. However, sometimes an HOA can be a little aggressive. The problem with a few HOAs are the people. Again, someone with nothing else to do in their lives. They want to be in charge and they're in charge of anything. I mean, they don't really care. So they join the HOA board, buy a golf cart, and drive through the neighborhood looking for something that they can complain about. Somebody who has left their, you know, garbage cans out too long. Yeah, I have mentioned garbage cans a couple of times now. Let's just say it's personal experience. The next issue with HOA is the fees. They can be hefty, upwards of $400 a month in some communities. There are some newer communities out there that have amazing facilities, 19, 20,000 square foot clubhouses, multiple pools, outdoor sports, you know, live bands, parties. Somebody has to pay for that. So while you think about all that fun looks good at the beginning, thinking, you know, two years from now, Personally, I, I can party with the best of them. But I'm thinking that for a couple of years of doing this, I would much rather uh, slip out in the backyard and get in my own pool where I can escape from the crowd once in a while. Problem with that is most uh, communities are not gonna allow pools in your backyard. You're kind of stuck. Just thinking that there are alternatives to adult communities. In Florida, the seller is required to provide a copy of the HOA docs and a financial statement. Make sure you get them. Those docs are going to cover any restrictions, and believe me, there are going to be restrictions. How many pets, what size, and what breeds? What limits are there about planting uh, flowers or changing the landscape, if you can even do that? What are the minimum age requirements for people to live in the, in the community? For the most part, one person on the title is going to have to be 55 years or older. Some, uh, some communities have a minimum age requirement for any other person living in the home. Think spouse, uh, partner. You may need to, you, know, you need to make sure that that works for you. A big restriction a lot of people are concerned about involves children and grandchildren visits. For the most part, the community is gonna limit the number of days children or grandchildren, basically anybody 18 younger, can stay for a visit. Usually that's 30 days a year, however, I have some seen some communities that limit those days to 14 days per year. Another little item that the, the rules state sometimes is that an adult child, someone 18 or older, cannot stay in your home unsupervised. That means if you are a snowbird, live in the community here in Florida during the winter months, but go home to Michigan in the winter and the summertime and that house is vacant, your child can, and their family are not allowed to stay at that your winter home here in Florida while they go to Disney for the week, you know, unless you happen to be there with them. This rule really comes into play you know, over the, by the beaches and around Orlando. An option to this is a multi-generational community. They have become very popular over the last few years and are springing up all over the Bay Area. A multi-gen community has a section set up for 55 plus residents that is gated with its own and separate amenities. Very similar to you know any other adult community. It is a gated section as part of a larger community of unrestricted age res residents. The unrestricted section has its own set of pools and tennis courts and other amenities that all the residents in the, in the community can use. What you get is a community where grandpa and grandpa 
to live in a restricted 55 plus area while the kids and grandkids live in a non-restricted area. I mean, you're close, but not that close. The two that come to mind are Marada and Angeline. Both of those are out north of Tampa. I have videos on both, but they are all over the Bay Area. One last thing about the HOAs, that monthly fee does not go down. Finally, and it's not really a negative, it's just something you need to be aware of. You're in a 55 plus community that probably doesn't allow kids. That is going to cut into the uh, buyer's pool when you get to ready to sell. The buyers are gonna have to be, at least one of them, are gonna have to be 55 or older, no kids. There are a lot more buyers out there that are 55, but have kids. Could make selling the house a little more difficult, make a little bit more time. On the upside, there are plenty of empty nesters out there looking for 55 plus communities with, and, and for good reason. A 55 plus community offers a lot. There's all kinds of activities and events. Paul and I have talked about moving into a 55 plus ourselves. Probably gonna be our next move. Most of the people where we live now are younger. I mean, they have kids and are doing the kid thing on the weekends. It would be nice to be able to go hang out by the pool with other adults that aren't going to travel ball on the weekends that, that we can actually associate with right here in the community. If you have questions about uh, adult communities or you know, pretty much any community around the Tampa Bay area, give me a call or text me. The number is on the screen. We would love to help you move into an adult community if you decide that's what's best for you. There are several around the Tampa Bay area. We can work with any one of them. Hope you liked the video. I go out and make it a great day.